Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we're going to continue our series on the Stephen King tribute bus from Gilman Productions. Up today is Mr. Barlow from that creepy movie Salem's Lot. If you haven't seen this movie or if you haven't seen it in a while, pick it up on Blu-ray and give it a watch. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Great uh, atmospheric shots, good story, and of course, this guy. So we're going to take a look at this today. Again, Gilman Productions, sculpted by the God-gifted hands of Mark Van Tyne, who captures Mr. Barlow perfectly. I'm going to kind of spin this around a little bit. So you can kind of take a look at the kit uh, before we uh, talk about it a little bit. It's a decent size and of course you get the uh, cobblestone base. You have get Mr. Barlow and you get of course his creepy hands with the claws. And as you go around and take a look at it, you can just see uh, the detail that Mark has captured in this thing. It's just beautiful. Kind of go a little slow so we don't get you dizzy. So much that he's done in here from the design in the cloak that he had in the movie, the design on the back collar area, to the door that's on the base. We're going to open that door in a little bit so you can see what's inside. Okay, so let's take a little bit uh, time here and just give you a brief synopsis of what I did to paint this beautiful sculpt and to bring it to life. We started again. Everything except the hands and the head was base coated in black. And again, I hand brush all the black on. To me, it just gives a good starting point and helps you build on a deep base coat. So for his cloak, uh, just again, over the black, I enlisted uh, one of my favorite uh, colors from Badger Freak Flex, and that is the near black. Through my airbrush, I just spray that on and you kind of just go a little bit heavier, give it a general coat all over first just to give yourself the nice base. You'll notice that it just pops over the black. So after you do that, I kind of tone it all back down with transparent black. But then I come back in like in the centers all the way around and I just kind of do a little bit heavier with the near black just so you can see a slight difference. And um it gives you the look that you see here. And really that's all I did with it. And then I came back in with the near black and I just uh, dry brushed over the uh, designs in the cloak here. There's raised areas. And I just lightly dry brushed just to pop them out a little bit more while keeping all the uh, original colors inside of it. Now for around the cloak area here in the movie it, it was a gold. So again just took out some uh, gold and dry brushed it around the front and all the way around the back just a light dry brushing of that and that again just pulls it together and gives you the look from the movie now on the back here too around the neck area Mark has sculpted a lot of the design in here that you see on the cloak in the movie again that was handled with dry brushing of the near black to make it stand out a little bit more and then on the inside here, you can see part of another uh, of a shirt there underneath the cloak. That I just uh, you enlisted the uh, metallic black. You're probably going, what? Yeah, metallic black. It just gives it a nice contrast of black differences. Once you dull coat that, you don't see any metallic at all. just all disappears. But it gives you that nice contrast that you see of blacks. When you handle figures with a lot of blacks, the key is shading the blacks, and that's where the near black comes in, or using different types of blacks. A metallic black is just another tool in your toolbox, if you will, to use to give you different colors. Give it a try sometime. I think you'll be surprised on what it does. Again, you can buy it in Delta Cream Coat, any of those uh, colors you see at the craft stores. You can usually get them in a, from this size up to a big honking size. And usually you can get that for about five bucks. Goes forever. 
And believe it or not, you can thin that down and spray it through an airbrush. I have done that. So another option for paints that prices keep going up, you can keep your costs down. That way you can spend more money on the kits. Makes sense to me. So now that you have this done, it's time to move on to the head and the hands. So with that, again, what I ended up doing over the gray primer is I decided after a couple trials and errors, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to paint them black. So pulled out my trusty Delta Cream Coat Black and I hand brushed black on the head and the hands. And I know there's probably many ways you can do that, but I was trying to uh, achieve something with deeper shadows, so I decided, hmm, why not try the black? I'm a pusher of the black base coat. Take another step. So with that done, what I did then is I came in with uh, a pale blue from uh, Garage US Colors, and I just started airbrushing the blue over the black on the hands, on the head, and it just gives you the blue pops, but yet you can still see the shadowing of the black. So I continued just going around all the areas here, hitting the blues, and just kind of gave it a whole light misting of that pale blue on the hands, on the head. Came in then with uh, some transparent Mars Red, again from the Garage US Colors, and just hit under the eyes and the lips. So that's how come you see a little bit of a red under the eye area. And that was done with the transparent Mars Red. So once I did that, I came back in with uh, some transparent black, hit under the eyes, under the nose, and all the folds in the skin. I came in with the trans black and just kind of punched in the shadows. Same with the hands. Just so many areas. I went a little heavier around the knuckles, around where the nails come in. Got to be careful. These are sharp. These are well done and well casted. Bravo, Paul Gill. I mean, these came, as you see them, perfect and no problems at all. So I just kept punching in the blacks. Came in with uh, the veining. Uh, mixed in some uh, purple with a pastel. And just started punching in the veinings that you see on both of his hands. The veinings on the head. There's little bits of veins along here. And just kept, you know, working the pastels back and forth, back and forth, until I got the look that I wanted to achieve. So then I came back in again with the um, pale blue and started hitting the highlights. Came in a little bit heavier. Loaded up my um, Patriot Chrome, and which is great for detailing. And I came in and started hitting the cheekbones sides of the nose, top of the nose, eyebrows, under the above the lips, chin area, all the little crevices here, around the ears, on the hands. Just started punching up some shadows. Went a little bit heavier here. I wanted to have a nice contrast from here to the eye. So I punched it up here, went darker in the eye to give them that look. And then I went in with his teeth and I uh, enlisted again from Badger Freak Flex to Rotten Tooth Tan. Came in and just uh, lightly started uh, painting in each teeth that you see, each tooth, pardon me. And then came in with a nice dirty wash of raw, uh, raw umber and dark brown. So I kind of went back and forth and just kind of washed in the area and then lightly came back in just lightly uh, came in a little heavier and dry brushed the centers of each of the teeth to give you the look that you see here. Came back in again, then went transparent black, kind of darkened the lips, a little more shadowing around the head area, around the hands area. And really that's all I did with his uh, head and hands. The uh, nails themselves were again, I enlisted the rotten tooth tan and just hit those and then uh, washes through the airbrush with uh, transparent dark brown to give you that dirty look that you see here. And then of course his eyes, uh, those were fun. 
started out with a, uh, I believe it was from the, um, again, Garage US Colors, and it was neutral gray. You don't want to use a white in eyes, it's just too stark. I like to use neutral gray for my eyes. I used to like a color too from Badger Freak Flex, uh, which was bleach bone tan. I need to get some more of those. So if you ever watch this, Ken, I'm going to be getting a hold of you. So come in with that, and I just kind of did a nice little hand brush of the eye areas with the neutral gray. Then I came in um, and tried to punch in real lightly below the eyes again with the transparent Mars red. I used my Patriot uh, Chrome. That way I can get inside there real fine and get that uh, look there. And if you mess up a little bit and it gets too much in the eyes, just come back in with your original color and just kind of touch it up. And then I came in with the eyes. I did a nice little circle with uh, black. And I believe on this one that I used the uh, metallic black because I wanted a different look. Then I came in with uh, some green on this and I just kind of did the iris of it in green and then came back in with the center of the pupil with black and it gives you that creepy look that he had in the film. And uh, then I came in with some pastels and kind of punched in some redness to his eyes to give it that the red look, you know, the distress look, if you will. And that's really all I did with the eyes. Of course, then the eyes were gloss coated after you dull coat the entire piece and you want to come in with your gloss coat of your choice. And then you hit that and it gives you that nice shiny look. And then uh, from there, that was basically everything you see done with him. The base itself, straightforward, all base coated in black. Then I came in with uh, some, some grays and just started hitting all the stone areas. Put in some uh, transparent raw umber to give it some different hues. And it's some dark browns, believe it or not, transparent dark browns are in there. And then, of course, transparent black tone it all down and also I use a lot of the transparent black and really punch in the uh, lines between each stone just to kind of have it stand out a little bit and then of course the front same same treatment done there and it's really a back and forth punch in more grays tone it down with transparent black back and forth until you get what you're looking for the door itself over the black was I enlisted um, I believe the rich brown for this one, which is also from Garage US Colors. Yes, I'm a fan. And I just started punching in the colors, as you see, stands out. Use some transparent dark browns for all the lines and some of the folds in the door. You kind of just punch that in. It kind of just really gives it a nice look, the look you see here. Then again, once you're done with all that, you just tone it all back down a tad with the transparent black. And it just kind of ties it all together. Now you may say, what's behind the door number one? Glad you asked. Mark did an amazing job at this. Behind door number one, you see the two figures that Mark sculpted into this base. If you remember uh, near the end of the film, when our two heroes were battling Mr. Barlow, some of the people started to creep out of the uh, little dungeon in the basement. These were two of those guys. So you can see here they're on their way out and uh, basically for them you could do these in many ways for me I just went with different flesh tones some uh, grays and whites for his shirt some greens for the other guy here I just kind of wanted a little bit of the difference but yet I wanted them to stand out a little bit the background I kept working back and forth with transparent reds and browns in uh, transparent black, you know, just kind of making it like it's supernaturally, you know, they're coming out of an area that's kind of different, if you will. And that's what I was trying to achieve there. So a lot of detail work in here, it actually goes pretty good. Believe it or not, everything in these figures, everything here was airbrushed, uh, not hand brushed. This was all done, again, using my Badger Chrome. A really great detail brush and I can't recommend that enough. Uh, Badger and Ken in particular has been very kind to me over the years. I've probably bought three or four compressors. 
probably have five airbrushes over there, all uh, Badgers, and I'm just a fan of theirs. Uh, great customer service, um, stand-up company, and I can't recommend them enough. There's a ton of great airbrushes out there, Awada, so many different ones out there that make good brushes. I just choose to use Badger because they've been good to me and I believe in them. So you can see with detail work, it does a lot of great detail work. Again, everything from the flesh tones to the shadings of the faces, everything was done with that airbrush. And so that's how she ended up turning around, turning out with uh, the figures along with the base. I, I believe it's a nice flow and a nice contrast and they complement each other, at least to my eye. So I'm gonna kind of spin it around without the door one more time here. This kit is available. Contact Paul Gill or Mark Van Tyne. I will list the uh, Facebook page information. Uh, you can reach out to them. Service is great. Uh, castings are flawless. And uh, believe it or not, quick, quick, quick turnaround. These guys are great. Good job, guys. So that's our look, our last look at Mr. Barlow. Unless you watch the movie, then you get more looks at him. One super duper kit and is available now just waiting for you to snap it up and add it to your collection again I can't recommend this line enough they are big enough yet they're small enough to add to your wall space if you know what I mean and mine line the uh, man cave along all the top of my blu-ray and DVD cases these guys line the area along the top of the case and uh, they get a lot of attention and again, Stephen King, fan of his books, fan of the movies, and hopefully uh, Gilman continues the line. Hurry up with that cycle of the werewolf, or as we call it in the movies, Silver Bullet. Maybe you could even dabble into a pet cemetery. I mean, there's so many things you could do. So many things you could do with that line, guys. Hope you keep going. So thanks again for stopping in to Talking Models with Troy Nair. Troy Nair is me what's up hope you subscribe hope you enjoy these videos I hope you share these videos and once again thanks for stopping in today and may God bless your day